فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم نعم ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most generous of the men and he was the most generous during the month of Ramadan when Jibreel عليه السلام visited him every night and recited the Quran to him during this period, the generosity of the Prophet وسلم, waxed faster than the rain bearing the wind, created in Bukhari and Muslim. عن ابن عباس عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان حين يلقاه جبريل وكان يلقاه في كل ليلة من رمضان فيدارسه القرآن فلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود في الخير من الريح <laughs> this hadith, hadith uh, number eight that we're going to go into, it's urging and emphasizing on the concept of al-badl waljud, generosity, charity, giving to those who are in need. Now, this is not specific to Ramadan. It's not specific to Ramadan. Rather, it is gener- generic. It's outside Ramadan as well. But in Ramadan, this effort multiplies and it becomes what? It becomes more. It becomes? It becomes more. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was known to be one of al jud wal infaq generosity and giving, was ziyadu fi shahr Ramadan. But in the month of Ramadan, he will multiply that and he will increase in that. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he described the Prophet to be what? He described him to be one who's very generous. But then he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَجْوَدَ النَّاسِ That means every time. وَكَانَ أَجْوَدُ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ And his generosity will increase and it will become more in what? In Ramadan. So when the month of Ramadan enters, my beloved brothers and sisters, the believer is known and he should be one who is what? Who's giving Who's providing That's what the believer should be When he described the Prophet ﷺ as giving He described it profoundly, amazingly What did he say? The Prophet's wanting for good The Prophet's generosity was more than what? Min al al mursala The wind that was sent. The word al mursala means al mutallaqah. That's freed. The wind that just flows. What does that, that wind that flows like that, what does it have? First of all, it has isra. It's hasty, right? When the wind just blows and it's flowing freely. It has what's known as al isra. It's fast and it's speedy. That's one. The second thing that it has is, is what? Dawam, consistency. صح? Also, the wind is a form of mercy, generally speaking. Allah wants to punish His creation with it, right? When it has that breeze and it's nice, it's just good. So, the, it's kind, good for the body, it relaxes you, it's good for you. صح? I never used to know this concept, brothers. But really, recently it hit me. You know that the weather can change your mood. It can affect your mood. When it's sunny and it's bright and it's not gloomy and dark. You know that, brother? Did you know that? Huh? You guys all knew that, huh? Oh, sorry. For me, it hit me the other day. Well, not the day, I mean, I'm a while back. But it, I didn't really think, how can the day got to, what's got to do with me? But what, the more I traveled to countries which were sunny and then I came back to the UK and I came, I was like, oh no, not again. It makes your day dark, dull. When it's sunny and the sun is out, صحيح? it makes you bright and shine and like that. That's wind that's free and it blows on everything is what the Messenger was like in terms of generosity. 
And also the, the wind, it has another thing. What does it do? It's not specific to a person or a people. It goes, wah, sah? It goes out. The Prophet ﷺ is like that as well. He's encompassing and he's, everyone falls in there. Alayhi salatu wassalam. وَلِذَلِكَ أَنَسِ بْنُ مَالِكٍ said in Sahih Muslim مَا سُئِلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Prophet was never asked عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ in the name of Islam The Prophet was never asked in the name of Islam For what? شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ A matter was never asked from him No one ever came to him and said يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ By Allah give me this Except he gave فَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ A man came فَأَعْطَاهُ غَلَمًا بَيْنَ جَبَلَيْنِ The Prophet gave him cam, uh, go, uh, goats and lambs and sheep between two mountains, full of it. The Prophet gave it to him, alayhi salatu wasalam. فَرَجَعَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ The man went back to his people. And he said to his people, Ya قَوْمْ My people, أَسْلِمُوا Take Islam. My people, take Islam. فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا يُعْطِي عَطَاءً Muhammad gives a giving. لا إِخْشَ الْفَاقَةَ أَيُّ الْفَقْرِ He does not fear poverty. Wallahi, brothers, do you really want to do you really want to guide the people? Do you want to help the people? Your hand has to be opened. If you look at the pre-Islamic, Abu Talib, Abdul Muttalib, all of them, what was the thing that they used to boast about by being the custodians of the Kaaba? They would say, we are the ones who provided. We were the ones. When the Hujjaj came to the Kaaba, before Islam, the people of pilgrimage, when they came for the Kaaba, the Prophet's grandparents were the ones who used to make people for them what? Food. If you want to be a leader for a people, if your hand is not open and you're not willing to give, but if you go to these, these um, charity, uh, charity organizations that go to African countries like that, they make these people become Christians by giving to them. They give them a goat and they say, who gave you this goat? Say, Jesus. Yeah? Wallahi billahi they, And they give them the little Bible books and say, read it. This is, this is. And the child, and the person is hungry, is in need. He gets given money. He gets given the droughts now that's taking place. Red Cross was sending people. Uh, the UNICEF was sending people. They were sending big kufar organizations. Backed with so much money. Sahih. And when somebody asks you for money, you're like, you start shaking. Like you're vibrating. You don't want to give. But these people, they give, and when they give, they say, who gave you this? Jesus. Jesus gave you this. It's from Jesus. So, ikhwani, giving opens the hearts. And through that, da'wah can be given easily. It's sad to see that the people who were awaited to be ones who give, the people of da'wah, the people who are standing up for Allah's religion, are they the ones who should be giving? Instead of them charging the people, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Instead of them giving to the people, they're charging the people. They're saying to the people, you guys have to pay this much. I have to get this hotel. I have to have this much come into my account. I have to have this and this and this and this. If that doesn't happen, I won't come. Are you with me, brothers? What will the building reach its completeness if you're building it and somebody's taking the bricks out from the bottom? That's destroying the da'wah that the people are. That's destroying a lot of work. Sallallahu is destroying a lot of work. A da'i ila Allah, he should be self-sufficient. And he should not look for money from da'wah. He should not. The deen Allah, Are you man enough to be struggle and to go through hardship in your life for this religion? Do it. If you can't be a doctor, get a 9-5 job, that's it. Leave it. Leave, leave. No, at least don't taint this maidan. Don't taint it. Don't what? Don't taint it. Our messenger would give to them. Give, give, give that they believed. They what? Muhammad is not fear of poverty. Sah. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say to the Ansar? I give to a people and I don't give to a people. I give to some people and I choose not to give to other people. Why? So I can bring their hearts closer to Islam. With a dry mouth, you want to, you want to guide the people to Islam. Give. Sah. Give. When things happen in your local area, you're, you're a da'i. It's da'wah for you. It's da'wah time. When they, your neighbor, something happens, you go, you knock on the door, you just give them a little. This, this for you is what? 
Shahad and Shahadu Allah ilaha illallah or Shahadu Muhammad Rasulullah. That's what's in your head. I ain't giving you this because I got a purpose. This is my goal. I don't want money from you. I don't want darahim and ma'aduda from you. I'm giving you da'wah. Sah? So when you do something for them, that's what you're thinking of. You open conversations with them. But nowadays, the da'wah has become argue with them, debate with them. Sah? Sah? The amateur nas don't want to debate. They don't need. They're struggling. They don't care about your your sophisticated IQ level and how smart you are and how eloquent you can put your message through. A lot of them don't really care about that and they don't need that. Are you with me? Putting everybody in that scope and making everybody an argument with you, it's not going to bring the religion to, people, the religion to them. And Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, أُحِبُّ لِلْرَّجُّلِ زِيَادَةِ بِالْجُودِ فِي شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ اقْتِدَاءً بِالرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَلِحَاجَةِ النَّاسِ فِي إِلَى مَصَالِحِهِمْ وَلِتَشَاغُوا لِكَثِيرٍ مِنْهُمْ بِالصَّوْمِ وَالصَّلَاةِ عَنْ مَكَاسِبِهِمْ Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, as Imam al-Bayhaqi brings it in his kitab, الْمَعْرِفَةُ وَالسُّنَنِ وَالْأَثَارِ In his kitab, Sunan al-Kubra. That Imam Shafi'i said, I love that the people give excessively, they give extra this month of Ramadan. Why? Why? It's because, first of all, you're following the Prophet ﷺ in this matter. And also, the people are in need of money because a lot of the people, they leave their job for Ramadan. I know a lot of Muslims who don't work in Ramadan. Some of them don't even get paid. A lot of Muslims, Allah, alhamdulillah, they're still khair in Ummah. I know a lot of people, in the month of Ramadan, they don't get paid leave. So they just leave without getting paid. But they get agreement with their business company or whatever they're working for and they don't come. If you know that, and you know there's a month going on and that brother is not going to get a job. He's not going to get money in his account. Are you with me, brothers? Another thing is, wallah, we have reverts. Ikhwanuna, our brothers. And sisters, sisters. We have revert brothers and sisters of us who chose Islam. They took Islam, they shed the shahadat, Allah, ilaha illallah, Muhammad, Rasulullah. They have nobody to break their fast with. They have no one to break their iftar with. They have no one to eat with. Allah Taala gave you a family. Allah Taala gave you a household. If you have the akhi, this month of Ramadan is a month where you take one or two of those people and you say, your Ramadan is upon me. Your Ramadan is on me. I am going to break your fast every single day. You come to my house and you eat with me. We go tarawih together, don't worry. Anybody who feeds a person who is fasting, you get the reward of that person who is fasting. All, he's, all the day of what he was doing, the rewards on your scale. Without the reward being reduced from him. Without the reward, what? Who's more? In, and not only that, it's a form of da'wah for this brother who's a river or sister. I remember our brother Imran, the other day, we, a, a, a brother was mentioned Da'wah Islam He wants to come into Islam What was the point he said? He said I Are the Muslims going to accept me? He said Are the Muslims going to accept him? Are, are the Muslims going to love me? Are they going to And we looked at each other And said Well lie the reality <laughs> He doesn't know He's not with us at that moment But look at it The minute the brothers take the shahada Shadu Allah ilaha Allah Shadu Muhammad Allah 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 Takbir Allah Allah Takbir Everybody says it, MashaAllah Which is good Expe oh, Everybody jumps on him Pounds on him Hugs him Akhi Allah we love you Akhi if you need anything I'm here hey, yeah, the, the next day he comes to the masjid No one wants to see him He feels like he got fooled What does he feel like? He got tricked into Islam There's no way out of it huh? Are you with me brothers? And that's a, lo that's a lot of reality Of many many people if you can't feed them and if you can't give them uh, food or you can't, at least, you know, mahali, give them what you call it, money. Give them money to break their fast. If not, I know one brother who did, my Allah bless him, reward him. He brought a, he brought something, he started something in his local masjid. You can't bring some brothers together, your local masjid put money together and make the masjid provide for the people of the Muftarin. That's another, and that's better because that's the masjid. And that brings them into the masjid and the high the energy, sahih. Some project, something put together that the Muslims do in the masjid. Food is provided, then little minders are given to them, their taqwiyatul iman, they're given little ahkam, bite size are given to them. Huh? And they see the Muslims eating together, that's it, hands in. The imam who's the leading taraweeh, he's got his legs crossed, he's got his fingers in the, in the dish, just like everybody else. No one's better than no one. Are you with me? The Mu'addin is eating with the, the caretaker is eating with the Imam. No one's better than no one. Inna akramakum indallahi. 
atqakum. No one can claim to be better than no one. He sees all of that. He perceives all of that, subhanAllah, and the religion is taught to him like that. That's another point that we need to keep in mind. And these, I'm telling you, brothers, are concerns that are out there. They are what? They're concerns that are out there that need to be looked into. Um, Ali Salaf who had ummah, their pious predecessors, they used to strive to this particular matter. And Imam Abdullah ibn Abdul, the noble companion Abdullah ibn Umar used to break the fast of two people a day in Ramadan, it was said about him. Dawood al Ta'i radiallahu ta'ala was said the same about him. Malik ibn Dinar, the same was said about him. And Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the same was said about him. All of these, they used to break the people's fasting. They had people who they used to break their fasting and they used to take that opportunity. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, I'anatul fuqara'i bil it'am, helping the ones who are in need the fuqara helping them في شهر رمضان in the month of Ramadan هو من سنن الإسلام it is from the traditions it is from the practices of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام what is what? إعانة الفقراء helping the, those you need providing for them giving to them this is a month my, bro- my brothers your hand is open your hand is what? it's open you help اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق O oh Allah, purify our hearts from hypocrisy. And from our actions showing off. And lying from our tongues. And O oh Allah, support us and help us from min al And provide us and save us from, what do you call it? Tricking and fooling the people. Now. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Whoever forgets that he is fasting and eats or drinks, he is to complete his fast as it was Allah who fed him and gave him something to drink. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man nasya wa huwa sa'imun fa'akala aw shariba Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said so this hadith what we take from it is what? that anyone who eats or he drinks and he forgot so you go and you drink you ate a full meal and then you Allah I was fasting la ilaha illallah you, don't worry carry on your fasting فَإِنَّمَا أَطْعَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَسَقَاهُ The one who provided for you, the one who gave you the drink and the meal and everything is who? Allah. Now this is, there's an issue here right now. That many people get wrong. This person, he's not to be blamed because he forgot, right? But the people who see him should stop him. Are you there, brothers? You see your brother in the month of Ramadan munching and you're just like, I'm not going to tell him. I ain't telling him. Allah is providing for him. He's been provided. I can't do nothing. I'm not getting in the way of his provision and his risk. Now it falls in the hadith. Anyone who sees that which is wrong taking place, then you should stop it with your hand. If you can't, then stop it with your mouth or the tongue. And if you can't stop it with your tongue, you stop it. In, you, st- you hate it in your heart, and there's no. That's the weakest iman. Pay attention to this. So if you see it, you say, "Brother, are you, are you fasting?" Allah. He should put his. He should put his what? Whatever he's drinking or eating, he should put it down, and he should carry on his fasting. But what he's taken in, it's not going to what. He's not going to be held account for it. He's not going to be. He's not going to be held account for it. Now this hadith, some people what they try to do is they try to take what is known out of it al mafum. An opposite understanding, which is that the Prophet said, "Man nasiya wa saimun." Anyone who forgets whilst he's fasting, fa akala o shariba, and he drinks. So they say, okay, if he's not drinking or he's not, then he has to what? His fasting breaks if he does it out of forgetfulness. Does that make sense? For example, any other muftirat. For example, he had intimacy with his wife, but he's forgot. Okay. 
this then they say that this breaks his fast because they said the mantuq of the hadith has an opposite understanding and the opposite understanding involves huh? so they say from the dalalatul mafum about iqtida al mafum is that it's not your fasting is gone and that is incorrect the understanding is what is incorrect because the reason why it's incorrect is because this hadith is bi'tibal al ghalib it's looking at it from the angle of what takes place what takes place the most the majority of the time people don't forget and just have intimacy majority of the people time forget and they eat by accident صحيح? that's the overwhelming majority of the things that happen but this hadith is it is takhsisun bil ghalibi takhsisun bil ghalibi in other words it means that it was narrowed down to this but any other muftirat any other thing that breaks off fast if you do it out of forgetfulness it also has the same ruling which is you fell your team or carrying your fasting so a man has an intimacy with his wife she doesn't remember nor does he remember they both forgot مثلاً, and after after a while they remember that it was Ramadan and they forgot this does not break their fast فَلْيُّ تِمَّ صَوْمَهُ it takes the same ruling لِأَنَّ الْحُكْمَ وَالْعِلَّةِ the reasoning here of both of them is was, was what? هَذَا مُفْتِرْ وَهَذَا مُفْتِرْ this is a muftir, it breaks your fast and this one is a muftir, it breaks your fast second thing is that so both of them are muftirat, they break your fast the second thing is that you forgot both of them so how have you given them two different rulings so what we say is فَلَا يَدُلُّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى نَفْيُ حُكْمِ عَمَّا عَدَهُ but if you see a person as I said to you you have to um, you have to tell that person and say to him أخي stop drinking or sister stop drinking لأن هذا من باب الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر and eating and drinking in the month of Ramadan whilst fasting is it munkar? it's a munkar the ruling is a munkar. نعم. He's excused, but you're not excused to tell him the ruling. You're not excused for not telling him. Um, now there's another issue is, um, is there a qada on this person? Does this person have to pay back? Does he have to pay back that fasting? They said, okay, Karen is fasting, but is it? does he have to bring it back? Are you with me, brothers? Some scholars are saying he finishes off his fasting, but there's a qada on him. And there's a kafara on him, expiation. He has to bring that fasting back. Just because you were told to complete it doesn't mean it's, take, it's uplifted from you. Some scholars they said that. We say to him, La, there's a hadith from the Prophet والسلام, which is Ibn Hibban narrated it in Hakim in his Mustadrak. And it is upon Ala Sharti Muslim. Uh, and Imam Dhabi went silent about it, and Hafid ibn Hajar authenticated in his Bulugh al Maram, which is that the Prophet sallallahu he said, Man aftara fi shahr Ramadan nasiyan. Anyone who breaks his fasting in the month of Ramadan out of forgetfulness, فلا قضاء عليه ولا كفارة. There is no expiation and there is no paying back. So that you don't have to pay it back, nor is expiation upon you. So the issue is, if the scholars are different upon an issue, and a delil comes, what do we do? إذا جاء نهر الله بطل نهر معقل have you heard that before إذا جاء نهر الله جاء إذا جاء نهر الله there was a man by the name of معقل there was a man by the name of معقل his name was he used to have a little um, a little lake a little pond so he used to charge the people money and you're allowed to charge the people the Prophet hasn't prohibited charging people for water you're not allowed to but if you did the packaging or you bought a motor an engine and you've made it you pump the water out and you put effort in then you can charge no problem but if you just found water from somewhere you're not allowed to charge the people the prophet prohibited that okay and i spoke about that in my lecture i did on the issue of al buyul manhi wa anha shar'an but this person he bought the, mo- mo- the en- en- engine the mo- motor he put everything together the pumped the water out and this guy was miqal so he put the effort in there so he was charging the people give me money qadrullah ma sha'a fa'al guess what happened Allah sent rain from the sky and bam, the whole land just became flooded with water, lakes were made, ponds started to evolve. Are people going to come to him and give him money? Are they? They're going to go to that free water that Allah has just provided for them. Sah? When the delil comes, that's what we do with the scholars. We were using them before the delil. 
before the delil we were using them we was they were now the delil came ida ja nahrullahi batala nahru ma'qal sah allah's river came allah's ocean is here we're not going to take yours now sah for that that's what allah says in the quran what what do you say what tabi'u ma unzila ilaykum min rabbikum wa la tatabi'u min dunihi awliya Follow that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down and don't follow anybody besides Allah. In other words, when the ruling from Allah comes, everything's over. La qiyasa bimurid nas. There's no analogy or discussion once the textual evidence is in place. Khalas. Qudya al amru ladi fihi tastafiyan. The matter we were discussing is over. Allah's answer came. Sah? So now we have a hadith. Fala qada'a wa la kafara. There's no qada. He doesn't have to bring it back. And there's no expiation. That's mawtin on niza'ah. That was a discussion at hand, right? Uh, some of them, they try to weaken it, but that's what the matter is. But this issue you have to realize, brothers. Is this specific? Is this issue specific to Ramadan only? That if you do something out of forgetfulness, you're forgiven for it? Naam. That's not just Ramadan. Even if this hadith didn't come... We would have still given it the same ruling. This hadith just strengthens this point. Because already Allah Ta'ala would say, Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhta'na. In Sahih Muslim, what did the Prophet say? Allah said, Qad fa'altu. I did that. The Sahaba, this ayah is what? Rabbana, oh our Lord, la tu'akhidna, don't hold us account. In nasina, if we forget, aw akhta'na, or if we do a mistake, oh Allah, don't hold us account to it. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, Allah Taala said what? Responded to that dua. What did he say? Qad fa'altu. I have done that for you. Done what for you? Not to hold you account for what you do out of forgetfulness and out of a mistake. Crystal clear? So based on that, in another riwayah, the Prophet said, Allah says, Qala na'am. Yes. In other words, I've done that for you. So this is something that's general for all acts of obedience if you do it out of forgetfulness. You're in the middle of the salah and you just talk. Does that make sense? And then you realize you're in the salah, you carry on. salatahu. Carry on your prayer. Because the, what, what, what is it? In Allah tajawaza an ummati al khata wa nisyan wa mastukrihali. Allah has forgiven my ummah for what? Khata, mistake. Wan nisyan, forgetfulness. In something you do forgetful, Allah forgives you for it. Anything which you are burdened onto. Somebody puts you at gunpoint and says to you, hey, listen, you have to do this. Are you with me? You're excused for what you do. Not everything like him, by the way. There's some things that if you're forced to do, you're not allowed to do. Does that make sense? You're not allowed to. So, if, for example, they, you, get, you get put at gunpoint and they told you to commit zina with somebody else. Gunpoint, you're not allowed to. Or you're not allowed to kill somebody else because they got gunpoint at you. What gives your life more importance than their life? Sah? Are you with me? But Ibn Rajab mentions that in his kitab, Jam Ulum Wal Hikam. So that doesn't harm your, your fasting. Now. You said like yeah, if the person, for example, we are at we are at a time today, no doubt, and no one could debate that, that we don't have organizations and hayat, big organizations that come and that provide it should have been Baytul Mal Muslimin. And the Baytul Mal Muslimin is basically the Islamic treasurer and they provide for the du'at. And they just go out there giving that one. That's how it used to be back in the days. Are you with me? If he carries on eating, the issue of fa- kafara being on the issue of eating, then no. If you eat deliberately in the month of Ramadan, is there a kafara on you? No. There's a qada on you, lakin. You have to bring back that fasting. And even if you do bring it back, you're still an athim. You're a sinner. And outside Ramadan, is not going to be like in Ramadan. No. But going back to the point that you were mentioning, which is 
that so the Baytul Mal in Muslimin should provide for the du'at. If the da'i believes he's got no other way to provide for his family, are you listening? There's no other way to provide for his family. No other way. And it becomes a form of necessity that he has to get money. Then it becomes permissible ala qadr al haja. And the qa'idah is what? Wadharu to qadaru bi qadariha. The need is to how much you need. Are you with me, brothers? So whatever can pay your bills, you can make that out of it. Sahih? Whatever pays your electricity, your gas, your bills, your, your this, your that, you can. Anything beyond that, luxurious lifestyle or whatnot, are you there, brothers? You can't make money out of da'wah. That's what I was saying all the time. Wasn't that what I was saying? The reason I say you can't make money out of it is if you're paying your bills, you're not making money out of it. Making money out of it is when, it's, when it becomes savings. Ali ibn Talib, he smacked, what do you call it? Sorry, Abdullah Umar, Umar, Umar radiallahu anhu, he hit Abu, Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira was a governor. And Abu Huraira was making money. And who used to give him the money? It's his wages, his salary. And, but he was putting some money aside. Umar heard about it, he said, oh, you've got money to put aside. <laughs> so that means it's more than you. There's actually leftovers for you to put aside. <laughs> to bring it back. Imagine yours. He brought it back to the Baytul Mal al-Muslimin. He brought it what? Back to the Baytul Mal al-Muslimin. So anyways, the du'at, if they do take two things they have to realize. They can't set a price. They can't say to the people, this is how much it is. Without this much, I'm not going to do it. So, second one is, is that if the people offer you it, you're allowed to take it. Generally speaking, if anybody offers you anything, you can take it. The Prophet said, what did he say to Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar? Abdullah ibn Umar, don't ask. But if they give to you, take. The believer is good, take him. A lot of the times you see Muslims, he's hungry, his, his stomach is making noise. He's hungry, you can hear he's hungry. He said, come, come, eat with me. He's like, no, alhamdulillah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Jab'a bayn al wal kadib. He combined between lying and hunger. Isn't it sad? Combining between hunger a lie, you can't. So the Prophet what did he say to the... Uh, he said, لا تجمع بين الكذب والجوع he, don't, he said, don't combine between hunger and lying. If you want to eat, get your hand ready and eat. Take it. You got offered it. You never asked for it. You're humble. That's good. Don't ask. But if that person opens their mouth, make sure they don't open it again. Huh? Take what's... This is, this is, Allah said this to you. This is your... So risk say, are you sure brother? Allah Akbar, he said it. I want this, I want sah. If he asks you. But don't ask for it. So the du'a should charge the people in the sense where they set a price. Another thing is that if the da'i has extra money from his own pocket. Brothers, this is not the... Look, you're not doing the people a favor. Hanadinullah. you got money. So look brothers, you know, you're going you're gonna to send me a flight. How about this? I got my money. I got some money. I've got some money that I made and you guys are calling me over to come to uh, Sweden or Norway or something, yeah? i got money. I've got this much. I'll pay for the flights, inshallah ta'ala, but I don't have nothing after that. So, sorry. do something. Even if, you don't, even, if, even if they offer you something, bring something to the table. Why? You're not doing benefit for the Sweden people or the Norway people or the China people who are calling you it. And the deenullah, the religion of Allah. And I promise you, brothers, wallahi. سَيَجْعَلُ لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَنُ وُدَّى Allah will make for you lovers and Allah will open the hearts of the people for you. Yeah, ikhlas, sincerity when it comes. Somebody put their hand up. Ah, Allah. That's another issue. It's a business now, Ruqiyah. Ruqiyah now is a... This is the thing, the hadith of the Sahaba, Sa'ad ibn Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was, what was it? It's not from the action of the Salaf, and it's not from the actions of the pious predecessors opening a shop and saying, I'm a raqi, and the bid'ah, ma anzal Allah bihan sultan. There's no evidence for that. Are you with me? Opening a business shop and saying, I'm a raqi, ta'al arqiqum. I'm going to give you guys ruqya. Are you with me? But, to be known to do ruqya in the sense where 
people go and you do ruqya if you go to you just anybody brother you know some quran ta'al do ruqya for us are you with me you're from the general mass and when you go there and you do the ruqya they say you know what akhi you've been here all day today you've been helping us akhi i'll give you 30 pounds here is jazakallah khairan hada fadlullah if then you turn towards them and say listen i'm going to be here for today pay attention this this you can do this you can do i've been here today I'm going to do ruqya. If this patient becomes good, healthy, and better, and they recover, I want 200 pounds. He's allowed to say that. Jaiz, shara'an. With the condition like in he, the person has to get better. You can't charge me for your time. Sah? <coughs> Haram. No delinquent. Sah? So after two months, if this person becomes better, after two months of hard work, your 200 will be given to you. If after two days the person gets better, you'll be giving you 200. If after two hours they get better, everything is based on the better. The time is insignificant. Are you with me? As for being known as a raqi, and I'm a person who does ruqya, there's no evidence for that. But you can be a person whose people call you, I want you to do ruqya for the people. Are you with me? Because you're a Quran teacher, for example, or you know, you're a brother who people see you to be pious or righteous, huh? People see you practicing and they say, you know, Akhi, somebody's still sick, can you do ruqya on them? And you go and you, you do ruqya on that grounds, but making a profession, a profession. Are you with me? A profession like that, the sahabas whose evidence you're using, they didn't, wasn't, wasn't a profession. صح? They went to a, a, a people, and when they went to that people, they said to the people of that land, uh, take us as guests. Hadith Abi Sa'id al-Qudri, which is Sahihain. Take us as a guest. They refuse. They say, no, we're not going to take you as a guest. So the Sahab is just left. Then Sayyid al Qawm, the chief master and the leader of the tribe, got sick. When he got sick, when he got sick, they came and they said, Afikum mayyarqi, is amongst your person who does ruqya? Abi Sa'id al Khudri stood up and said, Ana. Ah, yeah, I do ruqya. So they didn't know, there, was, there wasn't a job, it was a profession of his. It's just, he said, I know it. He read Fatiha seven times. Boom, the guy got better. Look at the Sahabas, what they do. Look how pious they were. Did they take the money and did they use it? Did they eat it? Did they eat it? They took it to the Prophet. They took it to the Prophet as well. This is what happened. This was the storyline. This is what Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Then the Prophet said to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Who told you that Surah Al-Fatiha was a Surah that does Ruqya? That kills people. How did you know? How did you know? And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what did he say? When they said, Ya Rasulullah, can we eat them f- what we bought? He said, of course. وَضْرِبُوا لِي مِنْهُ سَهْمًا Give me a portion. Give, give, give me my percentage. <laughs> Why would he say, give me my percentage? To f- Ibn al-Qayyim and others mentioned is because if it wasn't for me, you would not have known Surah Al-Fatiha. Sah? <laughs> sah? That's a fadl min Allah. It's something Allah gives you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can do that. Somebody calls you and says, do ruqya, and they give you 200 pounds after good work, and they say, you know what, the person got better, man, here's 200. May Allah bless you. Yeah. If you, if you condition it, it has to be on the condition that the person gets better. That the person gets, not timing and hour rate, rates, and you do, this is not business. No, no, it's not business like that. It's not business. You're looking at your time, you've got a clock, you're like, Leek! oh, your time's finished. And you leave the pa- pa- person with mas'ur. He's got jinn inside them. And you just walk away from them. You say, oh, okay, your two hour sessions is over. Do you want more? A'udhu billah. I don't know how soon people lie, do it. And there are people who do that. How about the hijama? Hijama could be, hijama is not uh, within itself ibadah. Does that make sense? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the man who done the hijama for him dinar, uh, dirham, sah? Are you with me? Hijama can be charged, no problem about hijama. We're talking about the issue of ruqya. Yeah. 